Hi, this is Rick Sorwitz here in my studio. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Sorwitz Watercolor. At any time during the video, you can click on the link in the lower right hand corner and subscribe to my channel. And if you like the content, be sure to check out the links that appear at the end of the video for uh, more of my YouTube videos, my self-paced courses, or my live online classes. So today I'll be working with uh, uh, this uh, subject here, this little farm scene. I like to paint rural farm scenes. And it's a fairly simple composition of, of you know, fairly large shapes, not a lot of detail, kind of a, uh, some odd um, angles on the, the uh, barn, um, but it's an interesting subject. And uh, one of the things I've done is uh, I'm gonna apply a big wash. I'm gonna make this kind of a partly cloudy day. So I'm gonna come in with some, a little bit of some puffy clouds in here. I'll come down to the trees and I just want to, uh, I want to have nice clean edges on the building. You have this light structure contrast in the darker background. And um, I want to make sure I have nice clean edges and yet can be free with my brush. So one of the things I've done in advance is I put a frisket over this building. So I've taken some clear plastic tape, put it over top of it, cut it with a knife to cut that shape out and this utility pole also. And uh, that'll allow me just to be very free with my washes. Uh, this isn't going to be a real complex painting. I'm just going to keep it simple, simple shapes, simple values. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this sky. And I'm going to take a wash brush. I'll take a little cerulean blue. And add some water to that on my palette. And I'll just start coming in with my blue sky. Get a little more pigment in my mixture. Make sure that I don't make these all the same size and shape and I'd be aware of the spacing. I want to ver uh, vary the spacing on these, the, the clouds. You don't want everything to look the same. And some areas have a little bit more uh, of a cloud than some, more, some areas a little more blue sky. I'm not going to get too involved with clouds. Just I want this to feel like a partly cloudy day. And uh, I'm also going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a spray bottle. It's a fine mist spray. And I like to soften the edges when I'm doing a sky like this. So uh, pretty straightforward. Might add a little bit more down some of these treetops. And that's probably enough. Get some of the areas where there's some beaded up water. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm not really looking for uh, too much in the way of soft distant edges. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to start painting in the trees. I've dried this and I've cleaned my palette. I don't need that blue anymore. So I'm going to mix uh, a variety of, of greens. I'm going to take some of the sap green, which is a color that I like to use. And I shift it around a little bit from cool to warm yellow greens. I can do a lot of different things with this sap green. Add a little bit over here. And I'm going to add just a little bit of ultramarine blue. And maybe a little royal blue to get that a little darker. And uh, I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to take some alizarin crimson and add a little of that and make it a little more natural green. A little more blue to that. We have here, we'll add some alizarin crimson there. That's kind of a grayish green. And I'm going to take a little of this permanent green. Maybe a little, a little hands of yellow. And 
And let's see, there was some gamboge. I'm just making a variety of colors here. I'll take a little sap green and put it with that. All right. So now, keep in mind, because I uh, I've masked this off, I can be pretty free with my brush as I bring that down. And I'm going to use a variety of greens. I want to get a little darker mixture here. Add a little more red to that. A little lizard and crimson. We'll splatter a little of that in there. I'm going to have a little bit of dry brush here at the top. I want to get kind of a broken edge right at the tr at the treetops. I'm going to drag that along on the side of the brush. Create a little some broken edges, a little bit more. Pick up this bead of water. So I'm working at a uh, about a 20 degree angle or so. Approximately. So gravity's helping me move the paint around a little bit. Let's go a little darker down here. Get a little raw sienna in my mixture, bring a little of that kind of a gold tone here to the tops. Drag that brush around a little bit. make it as if there's a kind of a light band of uh, shrubs or some briar bushes along here along the bottom. Sometimes I do that I'll, I'll create a little bit of a blossom to do that but I'm just going to bring in a darker color above it.
Now I've masked off this utility pole so I don't have to paint around that edge. And let's see, bring a little of this darker color on the other side of that pole. Just so it feels like it's being overlapped a little bit. All right, I don't think we do a whole lot more with that. I'm going to, uh, See, I think I'm going to actually, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint in this, the tops of the, the cornfield here and let it get a soft kind of integration with the, the trees above it. So I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, raw sienna, add it to this mixture. And I'm going to use a, a half inch flat brush, I think, for this. Times when I want that to be a harder edge, but I'm gonna let that just be a little softer transition there. And go back to my wash brush now. Take just a little bit of green horizontally in here. Can I show the rows? Bring that wash down just a little bit. Okay. So I'll dry that before I bring in the, the, the side of the, the rows of corn with a darker value and kind of go over top that. And uh, I think I'm actually going to drag that down a little bit. A lot of that's going to get covered up because I'm going to drag up some darker values, but we'll see how that works. Um, but right now I'm going to get like a, a grassy colored green. I'm going to take some of this permanent green and uh, go across the front here. Uh, a little yellow to that, some gamboge. This kind of bright grassy green here, and I'm just gonna add a few marks. And I'm gonna scrape this one up. And once again, I'm gonna, gonna dry this. So this is dry and I'm going to take uh, some of this green that I have in my palette. I'm taking a large wash brush, a little of this, uh, also a little bit of the raw sienna, pretty watery mixture at the moment. Uh, but I'm going to go across here and I'm going to get some of this green. I have 
plenty of moisture in this. I'm gonna add a little red to that, a little royal blue, make it a darker mixture uh, because I'm gonna drag this pigment a little bit. I'm gonna take my scraper and scrape it down. And I'm going to scrape up. So I'm trying to create the, the feeling of the tops of the, of the corn right here on the edge. And uh, yeah, just a little more moisture in here. Okay, and then I want this to feel vertical. I'm gonna come across here. With a scraper, make a little, moving the pigment a little bit. while it's still wet, still somewhat saturated, or I won't be able to move the paint, push it around. Everything isn't just vertical, you know, the, th the husks, the sh they kind of fall to the side. So I'm trying to get some curved shapes in there also. A little less over here. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of a spray just to soften this. Make it feel like there's some little grassy shapes in front of this. A couple spots. So I'm going to dry this again. Okay, I want to go a little darker in the foreground here. I don't feel that that's dark enough. So I want to, I'm going to go just a little deeper with my color here, my value. I'll leave a few breaks in it, just keep it interesting. And then, a few marks going across here.
Okay, I'm going to dry it. I'm going to take this tape off that I have on here and I'll start uh, painting the, the barn. So that's dry. Now I'm going to take up the, the tape that I put on this. This pulls right up. You can see this is just a, maybe not be able to see it. It's just a piece of two inch packing tape that I use as a frisket. So that gives me some nice clean edges here to work with. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put in the shadows on this. So I'm going to use a six round brush, I believe. I'll take a little ultramarine blue, a little cobalt blue, we'll see here. A little rose matter. Make a bit of a violet. I'm going to add a little raw sienna to this. Okay, so I'm going to paint the kind of shadow side of this. I get a bigger brush. I use number eight round brush. Add a little color into this. Going over this whole side to start. tone in there that was probably a little more than what I wanted but it'll be fine the roof line. I'm going to go just a little, yeah, I'm going to have to wait to do this edge here because it'll, it'll, I'll lose the edge. Uh, so uh, once again, uh, after I I'm gonna put a little something on this pole. It's still gonna be light, but it's gonna have a little bit of shadow on it. And then I'm gonna gonna dry this. Okay, so that's dry. I'm gonna paint just a light wash on this part of the rooftop. I'm pretty much gonna. I'm going to come with just a very light tone on that, but it's going to be very light on, on this here where the sun's hitting it. Okay. I'm going to take the same color, same mixture, add some more water to it, and get just a little bit of tone on this. Very light. I'm going to leave the white of the building, the front of the building there, uh, very light. Okay. I'm going to take some burnt orange, maybe some of this ultramarine blue. And I'm going to 
paint this and let that run a little bit into the, the lighter area for a little bit of interest variation on the edge. More of a rusty color in this too. Using some of the burnt orange. Some of the blue. I want this to feel like it's got a bit of a patina on it. Some royal blue and burnt orange. And I'm going to paint in this pretty dark. This door, kind of like a window, or maybe a door where the bottom half is closed. I'm going to make it a door though. few marks under some of the edges and I want a slight gradation to separate this side from this side so I'm going to put just a very light wash here Bring it this way just to define that edge a little bit. Might even go just a touch more value wise. We'll add a little in there. It's a pretty, you know, just a pretty plain building. It doesn't have a lot of you know, holes and broken boards and things on it. If I want, I can add a little bit of texture in there. I'm going to add a lot, but just the indication that there are some boards. Same here. Just dragging this side of my brush. Go a little darker under here. And let's see. I'm going to take a rigger brush. I'm going to drop in a a wire and I'm going to dry this and that's where I'm going to stop very simple painting just dealing with basic shapes trying to keep it very simple this is an 11 by 15 inch painting and I didn't get real involved in all kinds of little details or anything, just dealing with the, the basic large shapes and textures. So I hope you enjoyed this.